Hey there, this is Handyman007, and this is my 2001 Kia Carnival. About three years ago, I bought this from the previous owner, who posted it for sale on Facebook Marketplace. At that time, I was scrutinizing a dozen second-hand cars, that fell within my budget and needs. And after doing several ocular inspections and test drives, this specific Kia Carnival, came out on top of my shortlist, because 1. It had a stunning black finish which immediately caught my fancy, 2. It has a spacious cabin, which can comfortably seat up to 10 people, and 3. It has an automatic transmission, and runs on diesel. So after a few days, we processed the paperwork and payment, to seal the deal. However, barely 6 months later, and to my disappointment, its once so smooth and shiny black finish, had started to warp, bubble, crack, and fade. While I did my due diligence, by consulting several automotive paint restoration shops, I was disheartened that all of them, gave me quotations from 60, to 80,000 pesos, for a full body paint job. I simply felt that their services, were way too high for me, to spend on a 20 year old car. And as time went on, it got worse and worse. Which brings us 3 years later, to the focus of this video today. Because instead of having it painted in a shop, I decided to hire a freelance car painter, let's call him Roger, to work on my car, in the comfort of our home. Well actually, not in our home, but more like on the curb, just outside our perimeter fence. And for how much? To the contract price of 30,000 pesos, all in. Which meant, it already included the cost of labor and materials, and the tools needed. So in this video, I will answer three main questions. 1. What were the steps done to restore the original, midnight black paint, on this Kia Carnival? 2. What were the struggles we encountered, and the lessons I learned along the way? And 3. Was 30,000 pesos, worth the final outcome? If you are in a similar predicament as I was, watch till the end of this video, I guarantee you, you'll pick up a thing or two. At the very least, it's gonna be an interesting story. You ready? Here we go. Roger, was actually referred by a neighbor. Several years prior, Roger was the one who repainted my neighbor's red Toyota Vios. So after I got his number, I called him up, and invited him over, so he could assess the work to be done on my Kia Carnival. After his ocular inspection, he estimated it would take about a week, to actively work on the car, excluding the days when we need to wait for the coats to dry or cure. To be honest, I felt just one week of hands-on work was rather quick, since I couldn't help but compare that it takes about a month for actual repair shops to complete a paint job. But I also thought, will those repair shops attend to multiple customers every day, whereas my car will enjoy undivided attention, right in front of our home. So I quickly dismissed that concern. However, I did ask him if he owns the necessary equipment to do the job, to which he said, yes. That was great. Because if he said no, and instead rented or borrowed his equipment, then for sure, our project's progress will rely heavily on the equipment's availability. In which case, I would have declined his services, and searched for another freelance automotive painter. In any case, I told him I'm not in a hurry, and so he too, should not be. I also reiterated, that I didn't care how much time it will take to finish the job, for as long as, after everything has been said and done, the car will have a shiny, seamless, and smooth black finish, and, without costing me more than our agreed price. He assured me that once he's done with my car, it will look newer than all the cars along the street. I liked his confidence, but I chose to remain skeptical, until I saw actual results. Anyway, he quoted 30,000 pesos for the job, and will bring with him one assistant. I said I'm good with the arrangement, only if he added repainting all the wheels, on top of my other requests, which I will elaborate in the rest of this video. He was fine with all of them, and so we sealed our contract with a handshake, and scheduled to start the project three days later. Every day, Roger and his assistant, are expected to work on the car for 8 hours. And in the morning of day 1, I gave Roger 15,000 pesos, as 50% down payment, and to cover the cost of all the materials, per our contract. The remaining 50%, I will pay at the completion of the project. And so from the nearest paint center, we bought cans of clear top coat and its catalyst, urethane thinner, paint stripper, putty mix, primer paint, midnight black automotive paint, sheets of sandpaper from 120 grit all the way up to 2000, masking tape, and a set of fiberglass materials. 
The materials alone cost about 6,000 pesos, which left Roger 9,000 for himself, and his assistant Ben. The focus of day one, was removing the old paint from the worst sections of the car, which were the hood and front fenders. Unlike the rest of the car, these areas were so bad that mere sanding, was no longer a viable option. Stripping it down to the metal surface, had become necessary. Paint stripper, is a corrosive quick action chemical, that hunts and breaks down paint, which makes it easy, to remove old paint from most surfaces. So after covering the windshield and headlights with old newspaper and masking tape, Ben was tasked to brush paint stripper on these sections, and scrape off the old paint using metal pallets and 120 grit sandpaper. Inch, after inch. Meanwhile, red flag number one, or my first matter of concern, wasn't with the paint stripping process, nor with assistant Ben. Ironically, red flag number one was Roger himself. Because just barely one hour since they began, he left the scene without giving me notice. When I asked Ben where Roger went, he said that Roger was called back by another customer, regarding a certain back job. Although he promised, that he'd return right after lunch. Roger actually came back at 4 in the afternoon, barely an hour left in the workday. And my first thought was, is this the kind of service I get, for paying 15,000 on day one? As if to make up for lost time from the day before, Roger was on a roll throughout day two, and had accomplished a lot of stuff. But first, let me focus on Ben's work. After sanding all the loose paint from the hood and fenders, his entire day was devoted to applying putty for metal. I believe he was using polyduff, polyester body filler. And just like most fillers of this type, it is a hand-mixable, steel-reinforced, non-rusting epoxy putty, that quickly repairs or rebuilds anything made of metal. I must admit, that I was quite amused how Ben, very skillfully mixed the putty with its catalyst, and applied it on the body. However, notice that he didn't completely scrape off some of the old paint, and instead, covered those areas with putty too. In hindsight, this was a grave mistake, and will later lead to dire consequences. And by afternoon, he was already smoothing the hardened putty across the hood, with 400 grit sandpaper, readying it for the first coat of primer paint, to be sprayed on by Roger. Speaking of Roger, he was in charge of all sorts of body repair in the morning and his weapon of choice was fiberglass. Fiberglass, is a form of reinforced plastic, made of glass fiber. The glass fiber is usually flattened into a sheet, randomly arranged or woven into a fabric. It is combined with resin, to form an extremely strong, lightweight, fire-resistant, and rust-proof composite. Because it is easy to mold into various complex shapes, it is widely used in bathtubs, boats, aircraft, roofing, and of course, automotive body repair. During his ocular inspection on day zero, Roger found three rusted holes each, on the left and right rocker panels or sills. It wasn't obvious at first, because the previous owner had it painted over. But when we felt for soft spots, and put some pressure with our fingers, the top coat caved in, and revealed rusty cavities underneath that were patched up by putty. However, putty, only works best as a filler, for cracks and small punctures, but is a weak material for covering holes at least two inches wide. While covering the holes with metal sheets was a good solution, Roger did not have the equipment, nor the skill set, to do a welding job. Besides, he said, welding will have taken longer and cost even more. So instead, he suggested we go with fiberglass. And I'm glad we did, because he was even able to repair my spoiler, which was cracked right in the middle. Because the spoiler was made of ABS plastic, welding it was out of the question. Thus, fiberglass became the most cost-effective, all-around solution in my situation. With just 1000 pesos worth of fiberglass fabric, catalyst, and resin, Roger was able to repair 6 rusted holes on the rocker panels, restore my spoiler, right size my car plates mounting holes, and rebuild the base cover of the second row passenger seat. Nonetheless, they still needed to apply putty, over these surfaces later on, not only to hide the fiberglass layer, but also to make the areas suitable for sanding. Because thorough sanding, will actually be the one to make them smooth to the touch, and look seamless to the eyes. Towards the end of day two, the car was riddled with putty patches, and a blanket of scratch marks. Yes, the entire body needed to be sanded with 120 grit sandpaper, to completely remove the top coat, also known as clear coat. And the texture produced by this aggressive sanding, will provide the primer coat an evenly rough surface, for it to latch onto. At the end of the day, Roger began taping old newspaper, all around the windows, in preparation for the next steps for day three.
On day 3, Roger brought with him his compressor, to begin spraying several coats of metal primer. It is usually difficult to get paint to stick on metal surfaces, because metal tends to repel paint, and keeps paint from chemically bonding. To solve this problem, a paint primer for metal, is applied first. A primer is compatible with the chemistry of both the metal surface and the paint to be used. In other words, a primer provides a stable and conducive layer, for the paint to stick on. Metal paint primers come in various colors, like green, gray, or red. They all dry to a flat finish, and provide a homogeneous background for the actual paint job, by covering up scratches, mild rust, remnants of old paint, and other imperfections on the surface. Coupled with good surface preparation of the metal to be painted, including a thorough sanding, degreasing, and rinsing, applying two to three coats of primer, would make any metal paint job flawless. Once the primer had dried, Roger and Ben spent the entire day for, wet sanding everything, with 400 grit sandpaper. One of the main benefits of wet sanding, is that it is a great way to remove deep scratches, and any debris that may have latched onto the surface. It also prevents the sandpaper from loading up, thereby extending the lifespan of the sandpaper. And after they were done with 400 grit, they moved up to a finer 600 grit, as the final sanding, before applying the black base coat, which was scheduled the following day. Meanwhile, red flag number 2 happened in the morning, when Roger asked for a small cash advance. In Filipino, cash advance is called bale. I was surprised that he was asking for more money, despite the fact that it's been only 4 days since I've handed him my 15,000 peso down payment. He wasn't even around half the time in the first 3 days, and left most of the work to Ben. And in the first place, the agreement was, I'll pay him the remaining 15,000, at the completion of the project. I really gave Roger a piece of my mind, to which he backed off, knowing that he was in the wrong. However, as they were wrapping up day 4, I handed him 5,000 pesos, but made it very clear that I now only owed him 10,000, and, he should do a much better job, at managing his own personal budget. Note that these cash advance scenarios, may likely happen to you too, especially if you are dealing with freelancers, instead of car repair establishments that have enough capital, to sustain labor costs. Now, it's up to you if you would hold your agreement absolute, or allow some flexibility. Execute the contract to the letter? Or show some compassion? Either way, be emotionally, and financially prepared. After four days of prep work, came the day I was so excited about, seeing the base coat, actually sprayed on the car for the first time. Because I wanted to see how it all came together. The process was pretty straightforward. From the main can of Onzal, midnight black paint. Roger would transfer a few ounces, into his spray gun's paint cup. He'd mix in some thinner too, shut the lid, shake it a few times, switch on the compressor, and lightly spray the surfaces with a back and forth motion. Whenever the paint cup ran empty, he would reload it following the same steps, and continue spraying, until the entire car was covered with base coat. Well, almost? Because for some reason, he kept on telling me that he'll coat the roof, after, he has done all the layers around the car, which did not make sense to me. Anyway, he pushed on, spraying the first and second coats around the car, with 15 minutes in between. But, I'm getting ahead of my story. It started to happen, just when Roger was about to spray the second coat, on the hood. And good thing I was there when it happened. We observed that blemishes, started to form across the hood. Upon closer inspection, some of them looked like bulging lines, while most appeared like round air pockets. It's as if they were trapped underneath, and are now forcing themselves to rise above the surface. Even the fenders and the front bumper, had similar blemishes, although not as many as on the hood itself. There was even a huge portion on one section of the hood, where the blemish was so bad. And when Roger scraped the fresh paint off, we finally understood what was happening. The blemishes were being caused by paint stripper residue, which was reacting with a coat of fresh paint. Because Ben did not completely remove the old paint back in day one, paint stripper was trapped with it, under the layers of putty and primer. And because paint stripper only breaks down paint. It was reactivated, as soon as it detected the newly applied base coat. And why were we so sure that paint stripper, was the root cause? Because the rest of the car, did not exhibit the same problem. The blemishes were clearly isolated, to the hood, fenders, and front bumper. These were the only sections where paint stripper was brushed on. To solve the problem, these sections had to be stripped down to the metal surface, again. But, I didn't want them to use paint stripper anymore. 
Instead, I let them use my angle grinder, with an attached sanding disc for metal. While it was way quicker versus manual sanding, it did produce a lot of dust, and noise. But had they paid closer attention to details since the start, things would not have led to this major setback. By the way, even the hood scoop, had to be stripped too, because it was also brushed with paint stripper in the beginning, and was producing the same blemishes. In the second and final installment of this two-part series, I'm gonna show you the interesting things that happened on day 6, and the succeeding days after, all the way up to the full completion of this project. And I'm gonna tell you right now, it actually took more than a week than Roger's initial estimate. But the most interesting thing I'm gonna show you in part 2, is how my car looked like 4 months, after, they had completed the job. Because in my opinion, the true measurement of quality, is how a piece of work can withstand the test of time. So, was my 30,000 pesos worth it in the end? If you haven't done so yet, be sure you're subscribed and have hit the bell icon, to get notified as soon as I upload the conclusion of this project. This is Handyman007, thanks for watching. And I'll see you, in the next video.